got an earache? Ouch. A scratchy sore throat? <clears throat> an infected cut? No problem. Imagine if the doctors could cure you with a dose of nanomedicine. Medicine containing tiny robotic devices. These devices would be so small that tens of thousands of them could fit across the width of a single human hair. These tiny machines could rove through your body in search of bacteria infecting your ear, your throat, or that throbbing cut on your toe. It's a search and destroy mission. They could kill the disease causing bacteria without causing side effects to any of the healthy parts of your body. Although still years away, that scenario is part of the very big promise of some very, very small machines called nanotechnology. Nanotechnology may give us computers the size of a grain of sand, but more powerful than a desktop computer today. Nano assemblers may build those computers atom by atom and molecule by molecule. But these nano machines could also build more nano machines or self assemble. This is an important feature because, in this way, you can create a huge amount of nano machines very quickly. Nanoscience may open the door to clean new energy sources, better ways of cleaning up the environment, and small but powerful new kinds of batteries. These are all part of the promise of nanotechnology. But what are nanomaterials? Let's break it down in metrics. Nanomaterials have dimensions between 1 and 100 nanometers. The term nano comes from the Greek word nanos, meaning small person. How you doing? A nanometer is one billionth of a meter. Let's get a sense of just how small that is. NBA superstar Shaquille O'Neal is seven foot one, which works out to be about two billion nanometers tall. A hand is 100 million nanometers long. An ant is five million nanometers long. A strand of hair is about 100,000 nanometers wide. A typical germ is only about 1,000 nanometers long. A water molecule is about half a nanometer. Fullerenes, or buckyballs, are one of the nanostructures most commonly used by scientists. Some of these hollow, soccer ball-shaped molecules consist of 60 carbon atoms. Others contain more. Each carbon bonds to three adjacent carbon atoms to form a ball that's about one nanometer in diameter. Scientists hope to make buckyballs into medicine to block inflammation. You've experienced inflammation. It's the swelling, redness, and pain in infected cuts. Inflammation can also be invisible. It damages the joints of people with arthritis, for instance. And it's also a big part of allergies. <coughs> The medical uses of buckyballs emerge from their unique ability to trap harmful free radicals. Free radicals are molecules that have at least one unpaired electron. That makes them unstable and very reactive. They try to pair up by grabbing electrons from another molecule. Free radicals make inflammation worse and can damage or even kill cells. Some free radicals form as a part of the immune response targeting viruses and bacteria. Environmental factors such as pollution, cigarette smoke, radiation, and herbicides may also create free radicals. Scientists have found that buckyballs can neutralize dangerous free radicals by grabbing those unpaired electrons to form a new bond. Experiments showed that buckyballs actually blocked some allergic responses in human cell cultures and in laboratory mice. Nanotechnology may help deliver the right amount of medicine to the right place in your body at the right time. Buckyballs have great promise for that job. Scientists are attaching drug molecules to the Bucky's carbon atoms. They add other chemical groups to make the molecules water soluble. This speeds absorption of medicine loaded buckyballs into the bloodstream when swallowed in a pill or injected. Buckyballs then release the drug upon reaching a chemical trigger. The trigger can be a change in pH, for instance, or a particular chemical substance, such as those released by cancer cells. Everyone would prefer to take medicine in a pill, 
rather than in an injection. Ah! Oral drugs, however, face big problems in the acidic and churning environment of the stomach. Pills don't last very long in the stomach. They released medicine fast, and then, bye-bye, no more. To keep oral medicines releasing their disease-fighting ingredients longer, scientists have turned to nanotechnology. They designed a microchip that can dock on the intestinal wall and release medicine through it. The microchip has nanometer-sized channels that will be able to steadily release a drug over time. Ah. This way, the right amount of the drug gets to where it needs to go. That's better. It's clear that nanotech holds a huge amount of promise. However, scientists still must leap over many hurdles before nanomaterials and nanomachines become a part of everyday life. One important challenge involves developing new ways of creating nanomaterials. Today, creating large quantities of nanoscale materials is still really expensive and time-consuming. Today's manufacturing methods are very crude at the molecular level. It's like trying to make things out of Lego blocks with boxing gloves on your hands. You can't really snap them together the way you'd like. Safety is another hurdle. We know how to safely handle and dispose of the chemicals used in high school labs. However, scientists and engineers are still trying to understand the potential health and environmental risks of nanomaterials. Some studies provide reassurance that nanomaterials can be used safely. Others raise concerns. While awaiting the answers, scientists will continue to forge ahead in efforts to tap the huge potential of these incredibly small materials.